What's up, gang? Welcome to The Greatness Machine. I'm your host, Darius from Shaz Day. I'm so pumped to have you here with me. Now, listen, The Greatness Machine, we're about two things. Number one, people who live in their passions. And number two, those who are creating greatness in the world and doing both of these things despite the odds against them. Each episode, we're going to feature interviews with game changers, business leaders, you know, telling us their origin stories, what made them tick, what got them to where they are now. Why? So it can help you step into your greatness within your life, your business, and your career. Occasionally, you might hear a few solo episodes from myself, moi, as I say, as I leverage my 20 years of entrepreneurship as a CEO and founder to help you grow and level up in your journey to scale your life and your business. So come be a fly on the wall, enjoy the conversation, and I'm stoked to have you here with me. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of The Greatness Machine. I'm your host, Darius Mashaz, and I'm flying solo. So today we're doing a special solo. It's been a minute. And this is around collecting one of the most amazing things that we as humans can collect on this earth. It's called collecting nose. I'm taking this from a friend, a new friend I made. He's going to be a future guest on the show. Um, and uh, he, uh, I saw him speak at GOT this year. And uh, we had this this moment where... His name's Wayne, and uh, he's a mentalist. And Wayne was talking about um, this idea of collecting no's. And so I'm going to show you right now. He gave me this, this memento. It's, it's a coin. It says yes and no. And he talked about how he loves collecting no's. And it was funny when he was talking about this. I was like, oh, man, I love to collect no's too. And so... If we a lot of times we don't like being told no. This is just like a, when we grow up, you know, we we're, we want what we want, and when we don't get a no, we, you know, with kids we get upset. And 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 the way his perspective around this of wanting to collect no's, I really saw this as an opportunity of, hey, if I'm not collecting no's, it means I'm not I'm not pushing hard enough to get what I want. I'm not trying to push the envelope in my circumstances or world around me to put myself in situations where I might be out of my element or I might be in over my skis. Um, I might be in a, in a way where rejection is the natural next step because I haven't developed the skill sets or the tools or the relationships or the social capital or just the leverage or influence to get a yes. So we start thinking about the people we say yes to, we should really start to think, why are we getting a yes from that person? You know, or why are we giving a yes to that person? When, when it, maybe we want to feel loved or we want to, them to, you know, feel honored or we want them to see that we think that they're important, you know, or we want them to be happy so that they continue to give us whatever value they're giving us, right? Or we're just doing it because we're grateful and something we're willing to give. But usually there's an exchange in place that's happening when we're giving yeses to folks. And there's an exchange of value that's part of that equation. And so when we take that and flip that inside out and say, okay, well, fine. If there's an exchange of value that's occurring when I'm um, exchanging a yes, then what has to be true for me to exchange a no, for me to get a no or for me to give a no? The answer is I'm okay with them not being okay with me not giving them what they want. So we might do that recklessly but generally speaking i think people aren't are not doing those things recklessly i think that we do them especially in business or in life or in entrepreneurship or in pushing our careers forward i'll give a no because i don't feel the exchange of value is representative of fairness and so with honoring that statement i want you to start to think to yourself am i collecting those and if I'm not collecting those, my sense is you're not trying hard enough to push yourself to your outer boundary. Because I think something happens when we get into this world of being okay with accepting those. And my brother, Mike, who I think I might bring him on the show, is the king, the absolute king of not caring about no's. Like he just doesn't care. And rejection is just one step closer. And we've heard this before. Re- rejection is like one step closer to a yes. <laughs> so there is a chance. Um, but we're one step closer to that yes. And so when we were uh, at MIT this year, Wayne showed us this exercise, said, I love collecting no's. And this guy's ended up on the Ellen DeGeneres show and he's, you know, he's going to be on our show, but this guy's, you know, an amazing guy and he's okay with people telling him no. He's okay with people saying, yeah, you don't get that. You're not ready for that because at least you kind of know where the data point is. I now know that, Hey, that person won't say yes to me. Maybe somebody else will. And maybe they're, they have a looser reference or they have a different appreciation of what you're bringing to the table. So I don't necessarily take a no 
as a definitive. It's a no with that person. And so he, he, he did this exercise with us in front of the uh, entire group at GOT, at MIT, at Gathering of Titans, and he called up a pizza shop. And we were in Dedham, Massachusetts. He calls up the pizza shop. And he asked them if they'll send us a free pizza. Now, inevitably, like the woman was baffled. She was like, like, we're in a room. He said, hey, I'm in a room here. I'm talking in front of this group of amazing entrepreneurs. And I'd love it if you could send us over some free pizzas. And she, she put, so immediately you're probably thinking, well, yeah, she would probably hung up on us. So no, no, I'm not doing that. Probably, you know, for, for those of us that are, you know, over the age of 40, 38, 40, you know, there was a prank call, right? This sounds like a prank call from like the nineties. Um, she, she probably has never been asked that question before. I mean, I've never asked that question of someone or when I order pizzas hell, I don't even order pizzas these days. I just like put it on my phone and, and you know, click, click an app. Right. So, so there's less likelihood ever of now of verbally someone asking for something on a no, like such as or asking for a free pizza, um, as it would have been maybe in times before we used apps and whatnot for that. And so she put us on hold for a few moments and then she went and talked to her boss <laughs> and she came back to us and basically the answer was that she couldn't because we actually were not in the delivery area, which was funny. And so it wasn't a hard no. It was a, more of a soft no. She just was like, uh, we don't really deliver to that place where you're at. So it was a soft no. Now, fast forward to two days later, we were at a social event and uh, one of the gentlemen sponsored the late night pizza party that was like an impromptu pizza party. He calls and orders the pizzas and he decides to collect to see if, if it'll work. And he says, hey, you know, I'm ordering 20 pizzas. Would you mind throwing in free five, uh, five free pizzas for the group? And they said yes. <laughs> now, now, look, should, I, should it be that we're always asking people for free stuff? No, probably not. You know, we, we probably shouldn't be asking for that. You know, like the people need to get compensated for their work and treated fairly. But, but you know, fair is, is very uh, subjective. And I just want you to take that idea because I thought that was, it was a very, number one, it was very entertaining to watch this interaction occur within our group. And number two, it really il illustrated this idea of like, are you collecting no's? And, I, and it was funny for me because I was just like, Oh, I, I'm always pushing the boundary. I'm always collecting no's. I just had never honored it in such a way where I was like, I can't wait to collect a no. I'm a collector of no's. You know, like that's a whole different perspective, which is like, not only do I like, like trying to get yeses from people, but I actually like to collect more no's with that, which means that I'm actually pushing the envelope intentionally with intentionality. So I want you to take a, just a second and start thinking to yourself, how am I collecting no's? What am I collecting no's about? Or am I only going for the yes because it's easy? And I'll use, um, you know, I, I started this business, Rise with Partners, a year ago, uh, well, a year and a half ago, but, but it, we, we launched as Rise you know, last, late last summer. And this is a great illustration of collecting no's. You know, the business launched in January last year, new to the wealth management space, new private equity, never raised money before, went out and started talking to people. People I actually thought that would give yeses gave no's. That was super surprising to me. Um, I, I mean, these are people, some people are people I had actually invested in. I'd actually given them my own money, investing in their ideas. And they ha and I, these are folks that invest. And they did not give me an easy yes. They, they, they basically gave me a no. And I could not believe it. And I went out there, and I, but I didn't care. I had no fear of rejection. I've been rejected many, many times in my professional life. I've had way more no's than I have had yeses. But every now and again, you get surprised with the yes. And the premise of even our business right now, when we went out there originally, it was we were raising 20 million bucks. And here we are now, you know, 18 months later, and we've raised $250 million. That was about collecting no's. That was an exercise in collecting no's. Even since then, right now, we're, you know, we're out there, you know, pounding the pavement, trying to build the business. You know, a, a private equity business, by the way, is a collection of no's. It's going out and beating the bushes, trying to get folks to, you know, talk to you about maybe selling you their business. You know, most people don't want to say, A, most people want, that have a great business don't want to sell their business unless you pay them more than probably the business is worth. Um, and number two, the ones that do want to sell their business, you probably don't want to buy their business. And then every now and again, there's a nice intersection that you come across where people want to sell and you want to buy and it's the right price and makes sense for everybody. And that's the win. But this bit, the private equity world that I'm in, 
It is, you are out there collecting nose nonstop. You're given nose and collecting nose, and, and you've got to look at a ton of deals to find the right one. And that's the world of private equity. So if you're an entrepreneur, just know that walking in that, that hey, if you want to sell your business, you're going to collect a lot of no's. But again, I want to take a step back and I want to think about this a little differently. I don't want to think about this as that's a bad thing. I want to think about that as it's a good thing. In my last business at TMS, my business partner, Ali, used to say, Darius likes to go shake a lot of trees. I didn't equate that to what I'm talking about right now, which is I was collecting no's. I was out there learning because collecting no's is about learning. It's a new data point. Hey, if I ask for this and get a no, why? Maybe I'm not ready for it, right? Maybe I didn't ask the right person. But have, walking into that with open-mindedness and curiosity is different than walking into it with, oh, I just got rejected. Urgh. You know, that's bad. Rejection is one more data point that gives you a piece of information that you can take to make yourself better, to look for better circumstances, to look for different roads, different trails to get your yes. And more, the more no's, the more no's we collect the closer we get to a yes. And so I just want to, you to take a step back today. Think of it. Are you a collector of no's or are you afraid of the no's? Because I will tell you, for me, it served me very well. And it was great context to realize that, I, A, I love collecting no's, but now I have language to put around it. So go out there, collect some no's, push the envelope, get that data point, optimize, revise, go back out, collect more no's, and eventually you get the yeses that you're looking for. Until next time, peace out. We love you. You are listening to The Greatness Machine, and that's a wrap for today. Listen, if you love what you heard, subscribe to the show on whatever podcast platform that you're tuning in on so that you don't miss any of our future episodes. We have tons of great people coming on, and we're, we're stoked to have you here to enjoy it with us. Leave us a review. Tell us what you love most about this particular episode. We love getting the reviews. We love to see what you guys love most. And if this particular episode you know, made you think of someone who's leveling up in their business and in their life, print screen, share it with them. Leaders are the best givers. And after all, we're all here to support and grow with each other. And in case you want to see some of the fun behind the scenes shots or some of the things that we're doing, I'm actually writing about this in my weekly newsletter. Go to www.therealdarius.com and subscribe to my newsletter. We're talking about fun things like business and life and mindfulness and cryptocurrencies and gosh, I don't even know everything and anything, but it's tons of fun stuff I write about. I try to get it out on a weekly basis. You can subscribe at www.therealdarius.com. And with that said, look, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. I love you. Peace. We're out of here. See you guys on the next one. Uh-huh. She's my lover.